Hello and welcome to Africans in London TV. In short, AIL TV. Abanyoro na abanyoro kati mbara mukize ni mbara mukia muno. Abuoli ya kiki ya toki ya moti wona inywe na abojo ni mbara mukia. So, I am here to talk about Bunyoro Kitara, Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom. Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, it is one of, it was one of the greatest kingdoms and one of the biggest and one of the most powerful kingdom in East Africa. So therefore, this is why I always refer it to, it has, it was, it has always been, it is, and it is going to be big again. I'm not talking about sizes here. I'm talking about its achievement and its historical um, facts. So, let us join the conversation. Let us join the debate about Bunyoro. Let us elevate Bunyoro, Bunyoro Kitara. Let us feel proud again as Banyoro people. So, come and join me. The conversation is open. I am here to talk about Bunyoro Kitara. Bunyoro Kitara was the biggest kingdom in East Africa, led by the powerful king of that time, and his name was King Kabalega. Now, history tells us that Kabalega was one of the kings that did not uh, agree with, with the British or the colonials. He told them one thing when they came to Bunyoro, that he was the king, and if anyone comes to his country, he must obey Bunyoro Kitara rules, or else go out or fight. And that's what he did. But in the end, as you know, as history tells us, that uh, if you failed to collaborate with the colonials, the result was blackmail. Now, Bunyoro has been blackmailed or was blackmailed since colonial time. And it has been marginalized since then. That's why you see the progress in Bunyoro has been slow until today. And that beca because of that, Kabalega refused to toe the line. Uh, now, also history tells us that uh, Bunyoro Kitara... It had two big trade industries. It traded in salt and fish. But now there is a new player in town. Oil, just recently, has been discovered in Bunyoro Kitara. So therefore, the people of Bunyoro Kitara, of Banyoro people, are saying half of that property must they all they must share the, uh, they must share whatever comes out of that oil but we will get back to to that later now i wanted to talk about this because i saw uh, a question posted by a guy uh, called patrick katende kabagambe he asked a question he said where is bunyoro going and in, in some, you know, on his post on Facebook, he said that uh, there must be change of leaders, there must be uh, uh, that, uh, he, you know, either he, he really didn't know what to do because he said many leaders or many political leaders have promised Bunyoro Kitara and the people of Bunyoro many things, but the promises hasn't really come to to fruit uh, to to materialize. Oh, let me rephrase that. 
all the promises made by politicians has never materialized for a long time. Remember, I have said marginalization, and Bunyoro has felt that. But I also want to let you know that Banyoro people, or in Bunyoro Kitara, have got the best people, the best intelligent people, the most humble people in East Africa. Now, when you look at uh, the uh, Bunyoro Kitara and the people coming out of Bunyoro, you will be surprised. Uh, we have got uh, business leaders. We have government officials. We have people working in the United Nations. We have got people working all over the world from Bunyoro. So the question is, why can't we build Bunyoro ourselves? So that is the question. I would also go further and say we shouldn't rely on politicians and we shouldn't rely on governments to help us because Bunyoro is ours, Bunyoro Kitara is we. So we have to start thinking how to develop Bunyoro Kitara, not relying on, on somebody else to come and build Bunyoro for us. That is not going to happen. If we, if we adopt that dependency or the, the culture of dependency, then Bunyoro will remain where it is. All I just saying is unite or perish. 